Judge, I, I've got to go over to the aunties. Aunt Irina's dying. Well, as good as gone. My dear chap, is she? Then you mustn't let me detain you at such a beastly moment. Well, what an early bird we are. Yes, don't you think so? I haven't taken my clothes off yet. <coughs> what has Tasman been telling you about our little evening? Only that it ended rather drearily, going off and having coffee somewhere. He really is an innocent. Do you know where Eilert Lovborg and some of the others spent the last part of the night? If you think you can tell me. Oh, I think I can tell you. They took part in a particularly lively party. Of the more sporty sort? Oh, the sportiest. Do go on. The spirit overcame him at my place. He ended up in the salon of Miss Diana. Miss Diana? Salon. The she who gave the entertainment for a select group of friends and admirers. Does she have red hair? She does. A sort of singer? Oh, yes, that too, among other things. In the old days, Eilert Loveburg used to be almost inseparable from her. And? Outright violence. He accused the door of friends of stealing from him. Said his manuscript had been taken. Turned into a very ugly brawl indeed with both men and women. Fortunately, the police turned up. The police? He put up an almost spectacular fight, if you can call it that. So it was a matter of being marched off to the station. So much for wine and roses. Wine and roses? Tell me, Judge, why are you so interested in Eilert Lovebor? Well, to begin with, I can't be exactly disinterested if it should come out that the whole incident originated at my house. Every respectable home is going to be closed to Eilert Lovebor from now on. As a friend of the family, I can't help saying that it would be, well, more than a little painful if this gentleman should find himself in a haven here. If he should try to invade... Oh, uh, triangle. Precisely. It would render me homeless. Ah, yes. A roost, but no rule. Uh, that's not what I've looked for. And I'll see to it that I get what I have. How dangerous you are when the last bids are made. Do you think so? I'm beginning to. Now, I'm only thankful you have no hold on me. Oh, just imagine what it could lead to. <laughs> Threatening sounds really don't go with your appearance at all. Well, I think I've managed to say what I meant to. So until I see you again... Goodbye, Madam Hedda. You going through the garden? Oh, it's quicker for me. Even when people are sniping from the inside? Oh, you don't pick off your farmyard cops. Indeed. Not if you only have the one. If you come for Taya, it's a little late. Or for you a little earlier. I'm sorry. How do you know she's still here? The place she was staying at said she'd been out all night. Apparently, you all had quite a giddy time at the judges. Oh, Hilat, you're back. Yes, finally, and too late. If you want to be alone, I could easily... No, I, I want you to hear as well. I don't want to hear. It's not about the evening. What then? It's just that we must stop seeing each other. Not see each other? I'm you. I've no more use for you, Taya. I'm not going to do any work from now on. Then what's left for me? You'll go on living as if you'd never known of me. I can't. I try, Taya. Go home. No, never. Where you are is where I want to be. And when the book comes out... Ah, oh, yes, the book. Taya... Our book is not going to see the light of day. Eilert, what have you done with it? Yes, what have you done with it? I destroyed it. But that's not... No. No! I scattered my life. Why not my life's work? I've torn it into about a thousand pieces and thrown them out right across the field right out into the good, clean, salt water. And there they can drift in the currents and the wind, and then they can sink. Just the same as me, Taya. For the rest of my life, it will seem as though you'd killed a little child. You're right. It's just like that. But how could you? It was mine, too. Oh, the child. All gone, then. Oh, 
had her. I'm going now. But you're not leaving altogether. I don't know. I don't see anything much at all. Aren't you going with her, Mr. Lovelock? Oh, it's not just simply last night. It'll go on. The fact is, I can't stand that kind of life, not anymore. All the defiance I had, may have had, she's killed off for me. I can't stop, turn round and just say no to the rest of them. There it is. That little fool's had a man's fate in her hand. How can you be so heartless? <laughs> you can't say that to me. To wade in and lay waste everything you've planted in her life. That's not heartless. You can hear the truth, Hedda. What I told her was fiction. Uh, about the book? Yes. Oh, it's not torn up and it's not thrown out across the fjord either. Killing his child isn't the worst thing a father can do to it. What is worse? Think of a man. You know, Hedda, coming home in the small hours after an insane, depraved night out, coming home to the mother of his child and saying, listen to me for a moment. I've been all over the place tonight and I had the child with me, our child. And so I took him with me and now I've lost him. Lost him just like that. And Jesus Christ knows where he's got to or who he's with. It's just a walk. Just a... It was the heart and mind of Taya. Oh. What will you do now? Nothing. Oh, see that it's ended. The sooner the better. Elliot Loveboy, listen to me. When you do it, think of perfection. Perfection? All wine and roses like yeah, you used to. That was silly of me. I don't believe that anymore, but... Perfection. You must go now. And for good. Goodbye, Mrs. Tesco. No, wait a minute. You must take a keepsake. From me to you. A keepsake? You recognize it. You were close enough to it once. It was then you should have used it. It's yours. You use it. Beautifully. Edit Lovebore. Promise me. Perfectly. There's where your child is, Taya. With its beautiful, flowing hair. Ailed love, Yours. <laughs> 